Hi everybody, my name is Melanie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be awesome. It is all about a DIY patio spring refresh. So something that's extra fun about this video is that I was invited to be a part of a collaboration with Rachel from Stone Cottage Home. So she has her very own DIY spring patio refresh video over on her channel. So after you get done with this one, I invite you to go over there and watch hers because it's going to be filled with lots more amazing ideas for you. Rachel's channel is great. If you're not a subscriber to her channel, or if you haven't ever checked out her blog, Stone Cottage Home, then I hope you do. And of course, if you're not a subscriber with Lost and Found, then I invite you to go ahead and hit that button and join the community here on our channel. Okay, so if you're anything like me, you kind of just try to survive the winter months. I'm gonna be real honest, y'all. I just don't love the winter. I love the warm weather, and I absolutely love my back patio. When we bought this house in May of 2019, like it was this space that sold me on the house. The rest of the house is kind of okay. I can give or take it, but this back patio and backyard space is amazing. It's a large lot and so it's a lot of work and we still have a lot of work left to do. But every spring since we've been here, I really try to make this patio space a lush and inviting place because it's where I go to relax and refresh and recharge. All right, so I'm gonna share with you my formula for how to create a beautiful space. I really do believe that you can have a beautiful home on a budget, that it's gonna cost you a little bit of money, but not as much as you see in those home decor magazines or home decor shows that you may be watching. We pulled together this patio with a mix of stuff we already had, items we thrifted, items we upcycled, and then I'm throwing in a couple of splurges because I really do think that you need a few splurges when you're pulling together a space. And you know what makes the splurges okay? The fact that you're getting all of these steals over here with your thrifted items, your used items, your upcycled items. That means that over here for these things that are really amazing and that really add that wow factor, you can spend a little bit of more money. So I've got a couple of splurges here on our patio, but most of it is steals. And honestly, even, you know, it, what may count for me as a splurge to you may not feel like much of a splurge at all, but that's how I pull together a space, any space in my home. And that's exactly what we're doing with this patio. All right, so this is a long video. We got a lot to show you. We're gonna start with what it looked like when we first walked out here about three weeks ago. Let's get going. All right, so here we are. This is kind of what it looks like as it sits over the winter. It just becomes a catch-all um, for, you know, whatever is out here. The pool is nasty. There are no plants. It's just dirty, overgrown. Definitely not some place that I want to go relax. Not some place that feels inviting at all. So the first thing we needed to do is really just dig in and put in a little bit of elbow grease. We have to trim this whole giant wall of boxwood bushes a couple times a year. Eventually we would love to rip them all out and replace them. That's just not on the cards right now. So we just try to keep them trimmed up. And then it was moving and sweeping and shaking out the dirt, just getting rid of the junk that had collected over there for the whole winter, giving the space just a nice sweep, a good cleanup. Nothing fancy, y'all. It's just kind of digging in and doing the work. And then already it's looking better just from trimming the bushes, sweeping, cleaning it up. Major improvement. So after everything was nice and cleaned up, we moved the main furniture pieces back, keeping most of the stuff the same, changing a few things up. Um, I did add this old rack, which I bought years ago at a flea market, and it's gonna hold our towels. And then I switched that white table, which is also another thrifted item. It's gonna go back here under this window, and I think gonna be a nice place to stage some pretty decor. Okay, so it's time to start working on the pool. We've had another cold snap, and it's a little chilly out here, but um, we're gonna get working on it. We don't pay anybody to do our pool 
Uh, it's definitely been a learning process for us. We've never had a pool before we've had this house. So this is gonna be our third summer with it. And it's pretty gunky right now. So the first step is to just, you know, clean it out. And then we're gonna get a little bit more clean water in it and get some good chlorine running through it. And hopefully it'll be pretty and clean here soon. So I forgot to put the basket back in the skimmer. And so it's full of just some fun stuff. I don't know what's in there. There's nothing moving, so that's a good sign, but I'm gonna have to put my hand in it. Woohoo! Get it out, yep. Better you than me. <laughs> that's right. Fun stuff. You at least wanna put some gloves on? No, it's okay. It just leaves. Until it's a snake. No, it's not, it's not a snake. Until it bites your hand. We'll find out. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Rose! This little cart I bought off Facebook Marketplace, I think for maybe $15 a couple years ago. It was rusty and dirty and it met our needs but I decided I was just ready to have it look a little bit nicer so we're gonna put some paint on it just freshen it up the first step was just to clean all the stuff off y'all there was a bunch of stuff that I just needed to throw away I gave it a quick vacuum and then I used my fusion TSP alternative cleaner just to get it really nice and clean before I added a coat of kilts just white kilts to block out that rust Super easy, quick with the spray can. I don't use a lot of spray paint, but for this project, spray paint was perfect. This pretty blue, um, it's a satin, and it literally took me five minutes to spray the whole thing. I know that's not the greatest thing for the environment, but I use spray paint probably like once every five years, so I don't feel too terrible about it. It just made upcycling this old little cart so easy and y'all it looks so much better now it's not rusty and gross and dirty and a couple thrifted baskets and throwing away stuff we didn't need and now it's just a nice little cart that holds our sunscreen and my watering can and some of our other things that we need for gardening Our next easy upcycle this little table I found for free I think it's gonna work great for our space after I work on it a bit so this little table is a really cute little piece um, it's pretty grimy and a lot of the paint is coming off and so to repaint it properly I'd have to strip all of the paint off which is honestly just more work than I really feel like doing right now stripping paint and there seems to be a couple layers of paint it's just a lot of work it's a lot of work for something that is this intricate and has these many curves and bends and honestly I just don't think that's what I want to do so we're just gonna kind of clean up this little table um, I like the yellow color I don't mind that it's a little bit chippy that kind of fits with my aesthetic the color works well for me so as a freebie like it's great for a year or two to just have out here on the patio and enjoy it like it is looked like most of what was on it was dried grass clippings like it had sat somewhere and somebody cut the grass near it and it all flew up on the table so with vacuuming with the shop vac and then a little bit of cleaning again with my TSP and scraping off the grass we were able to get it looking a lot better without like I said having to strip and repaint it
All right, so back to the idea again of steals versus splurges. A couple of years ago, when we moved into this house, we did not have really any pool furniture. And so um, we found these two Chase lounge chairs at Walmart. And they did come with um, a, uh, a pad, because obviously you just can't lean back like this. But within a year, the pads were completely faded and some you know, the cross beams on these chairs are already starting to fall apart. So these chairs were definitely a steal. Um, I think we paid about $60 a piece and they've worked okay, but we decided this year that we wanted to upgrade, get something that we weren't gonna have to be constantly finding a brand new pad for, that wasn't gonna fall apart. And so we have partnered with this company, blue.com, B-L-U-U. And these are two of their Patio Chase lounge chairs. I'm super, 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 super excited about them. They would count as a little bit more of a splurge. Um, they run right around $160 a piece, but I do have a 15% off coupon code that I get to share with you guys, which is super exciting. But still, even if you compare that to what some other Chase lounge chairs cost, if you look at like Pottery Barn or Ballard or whatever those places, and then really compared to those, these are a steal. So I'm super excited to get these open and put them together. And I really think they're gonna be so much better than these two that are gonna head to the curb. The process for putting these chairs together really couldn't have been any easier. The pieces were all there together in the box and all you had to do was lay them on the ground and the legs literally just pop in to the base. It took me maybe three minutes to put the whole thing together. That was just about as easy as it could get. No power tools needed, just popped everything into place and here they are. I still have um, some nice pads that I'll probably put on here just for comfort, but you can completely sit just like this. It's sturdy. I can raise and lower it. Oh, this is going to be great. Maybe I'll just stay here for a while, guys. So another small furniture change we made was swapping out these old vintage chairs. My husband never really cared for them. He always thought they were too small. So I took them up to my booth to sell them and replaced them with these plastic Adirondack chairs that I found at Lowe's. They were $25 a piece, which I think is a fantastic price. They sit well and my husband is definitely a fan of them. So welcome to my favorite part of the video where we get to talk about plants. This is my local nursery. Is it not absolutely gorgeous? I love going there every year and picking out what I'm going to put in the pots on my patio. So if you've ever wondered what $200 worth of plants looks like, it looks like this. These are a lot of plants. And I know that that's a lot of money to spend on plants, but remember at the start of the video where I talked about splurging, versus saving or finding steals. So plants are an area where I splurge a little bit for my patio. And that's because it just makes me so happy. I love them so much. And I really do think that a lot of plants is one of the big secrets in creating that kind of lush patio feel that we all love, like when we're out places. If pay attention, if you feel kind of like you know, you're on vacation and it's got that island vibe, it's because there's a ton of plants. And another thing that I've learned when you're doing your patio plants is that it doesn't really work to just put like one thing in a pot, right? You need to put a lot of things in a pot. That gives it that really colorful, full feel. In fact, while I was walking around the garden center today, they had all of these pre-made pots that were gorgeous and they were also pretty expensive and all of them had four or five different things in the pots. So I used to just buy, you know, one Gerber Daisy and stick it in a pot. And it just, it was pretty, but it just really didn't create um, that feel I was going for. So now I buy big stuff, small stuff, trailers, all sorts of things, and I cram them in a pot. So another thing when it comes to patio flowers 
is that if you want that bright color, most of the time you're working with annuals. And that means that you've only got one year to enjoy these plants. They're all gonna die at the end of the season and then we're just gonna be done with them. So um, my kind of philosophy on them is go big or go home. <laughs> that if I'm gonna only get to enjoy them for a year, I'm gonna make them as big and lush as I can. And when you put a lot of annuals together in one pot, where it almost feels like they won't even fit, that actually helps produce more bloom growth because they don't have time or space to really establish their roots because they're all kind of crammed in there. So of course, you know, there's a fine balance. You still want them to be able to all have adequate soil, but I put a lot of things in one pot and that's because I don't really care about letting their roots establish. I want them to produce those beautiful blooms because again, I only got one year to enjoy them. All right, so we're gonna get going just putting some of these stuff in pots. Um, now, a lot of my pots are steels. A lot of my pots are really old. I've had them for a long time. I bought them at Lowe's or at Walmart or some discount place like TJ Maxx. I don't spend a ton of money on pots. Um, so I count those as steels again, and then I just splurge a little bit each year with the plants that go in them. So this little pot is a great example of what I was just saying, how I don't necessarily spend a lot of money on my pots. You can see that this one was $2 at a thrift store. I have had it for several years and I just change out what's in it. And I think it's gonna be the perfect size for this sweet little fern that I found. So this big pot is always my feature pot. That Creeping Jenny was in there from last year. It survived through the winter, so I'm just gonna leave it and it will eventually trail down the whole pot. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I just kind of dug around it and filled it up with some fresh annuals and it's gonna be gorgeous. All right, so last year I had a big pot break on me. I was moving it and I dropped it and it was just kind of a disaster. So I needed a new pot for my hibiscus tree. So when I was at Tuesday morning today, I grabbed this one. If you don't have a Tuesday morning near you, they're just a, another version of a discount store. I love them. I think they're great. So um, this is a nice, heavy, it is not plastic. It's a big, heavy pot and I paid $25 for it, which is a really great price for a pot. But it's just a little bit too bright white for me. Um, I wanted a little more age, so I'm actually gonna take some Fusion Mineral paint, um, this is the color Little Lamb, and I'm just gonna dry brush it with some gray paint to tone it down a little bit. Now, if you don't know what dry brushing is, it's really, really easy. Um, I call it messy painting, and basically you just wanna take the tiniest bit of paint. So I like to just kind of dab the tip of my brush in uh, to the lid, and then you're going to dab off on a paper towel pretty much all of it then once I've done a lot of dabbing it's windy I'm just gonna very lightly brush it onto the pot you can see it, it's not adding a ton of color just a little bit and I hardly have any on my brush even got a little bit too much right there. The deal with dry brushing is that you can always go back and add more, but it's really hard to take extra off. So you want to take as much paint off of your brush as you can, more than you think you should. Oh, I think that is looking great. That's gonna just add a little bit more interest to this pot. first house that my husband and I ever owned together, we had one of these gorgeous Carolina jasmine plants that grew up over the whole front porch of the house. It was a restored 1940s craftsman bungalow, the cutest house we'll probably ever own. And I loved it every spring when this plant would just bloom and flower across the whole front of the house. Ever since then, I've wanted to have another one. So I decided we're going to put one here in kind of this empty spot on the porch. I found this crate at a flea market. Um, maybe about 20 bucks is what I paid for it. We're gonna drill some holes into the bottom of it. And then this trellis, you may remember if you watched my Vintage Market Days video, I bought it there. That's what we're gonna use to support this because it will climb. 
and I think it's gonna look perfect right here in this big empty spot. So another trick to staying budget friendly is to just reuse the same decorative accents year to year. All of these pillows I've had for several years now. And the same thing with our umbrellas. We purchase them at a variety of just discount shops and we keep their plastic bag covers. And when we're not using them, we put them back in those plastic bags and just lean them up against the porch. We put them all the way away for the winter. But even in the summertime, um, if we're not outside, then we take them down and put them back in the bag. And that has helped keep the color's bright, it's kept them from getting damaged, um, and you know, we're saving money. We're able to reuse them year after year, and they just add a lot of really nice color to the space. Just a quick reminder, this is what it looked like before. And after all of that hard work, here is what we have now. It is time to get out and enjoy our beautiful backyard space. I'm so excited about it. So one of the secrets to having your outdoor space feel more homey is just to add little decorative elements and those are all things that I pulled from just around my house or items that I thrifted or found at local flea markets or antique stores and I think it really gives just a nice homey feel to the space. And I remember the pool that was looking so grimy and yucky with just a little bit of hard work and a couple days of the filter running. It's now beautiful and clear. Not ready to swim in yet because it's still super cold, but at least we can sit out there and enjoy it and it doesn't look nasty anymore. I could invite you guys back out in about a month when these flowers really start growing. They get huge in these pots and just provide so much gorgeous color. I love them so much and I'm so excited to have such a pretty selection of them this year. Even some ferns just back in the shade just softens the space, adds some greenery. Look at that cute little bunny. He was from the thrift store. A candle for some ambiance. These are some additional thrifted items, some vintage books and tins and that cute little ceramic frog. 
this barn quilt I made. Um, I have barn quilt pattern books. I'm happy to share that pattern with you guys, but I made one to match the pretty pops of yellow in our space, and I think it turned out really well. And I think this table will be a great space to kind of stage um, our drinks. We like to eat outside when the weather's nice, and this will be a great place for it. And this pretty much sums it all up, guys. I found this sign, and that is just the truth. The porch is my happy place, especially now that it looks so much better than it did before. All right, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope that you were inspired maybe to create your own lush backyard patio that you can enjoy with your friends and family, that it will be a place where you can go be revived and refreshed. I would love to hear what you thought in the comments. And of course, if you're not a subscriber, then please do subscribe to us. Again, I wanna invite you to go over after you're done with this video to check out Rachel's video at Stone Cottage Home. The link to that is going to be in the video description box. And also, I want to thank Blue Patio for providing me with these amazing patio chase lounges that are so incredible. You guys definitely, definitely please go check out their online store. They have shared a discount code with you, Decor15, and that will give you 15% off site-wide. Not only do they have patio furniture, but they have an amazing selection of patio umbrellas and a really cool program called One Umbrella, One Tree, where they've partnered with the American Forest Association. Every time they sell an umbrella, they donate money to plant a tree. What I also love is that their stuff, y'all, is already here in the U.S. to ship. So you can order and it's gonna show up super quick. You're not waiting for it to ship from across the ocean on a container ship. So you can actually get it onto your back porch and start enjoying it. So please, please go check out their website. It's linked here and in the video description. That's all I got. I'm gonna go chill out on this beautiful day and enjoy my patio. See you guys soon.